copy that. Welcome. If you're studying in childcare with cash, I'm doing this for level three childcare, and uh, it's all about the the unit which most of you dread in, which is uh, unit 315, lo the longitudinal studies. So let us get to, get on with it. So I'm just going to share the screen with you. So this is the task. You need to break the task into smaller pieces so you can understand what exactly you need to do. So first of all, you need to know the age group. Is it for zero to one? Is it for three to five years old? So you have to have this study for a group of children or one child only for over the period of six weeks. So first of all, I need to know the age of this particular group that you've done all these studies, um, all these observations, I mean, through this study on them. So are you doing it for babies, zero to one? Are you doing it for much, um, like, uh, much older uh, kids, which is between three to five? It depends which age group you need to tell me. This longitudinal studies, you, which you done for which age group? You don't change between age groups. That's first thing. Second thing, you need to know what's the development area. So for this longitudinal study, I'm going to use just one development area. I'm not going to switch every single observation. I need four observations. I'm not going to pick each observation and pick different uh, development area. I'm going to pick one development area for all these four observations. OK, so one age group, one development area. Uh, as you can see here, it, it, it gives you specification. So you need to select one. Yeah, and here as well, you need to select one. These development areas, I have four here specific, which is cognitive development. What does it mean, cognitive development? Cognitive development is all about the brain, the activities, uh, like, for example, the child asking questions, thinking about things, um, requiring things, asking for um, particular things that the other children are not thought about. So you need to think about the cognitive or you can pick another development area, which is physical. Whatever the, the child ran, done, um, is it motor development? Uh, is it uh, depends on what you want to discuss. Also, we have a, a language and communication development and we have personal and social uh, and emotional development. So as we can see here, we have let us go back. We have uh, so let us read it from the beginning. It says complete one longitudinal study on an individual dual child in the work environment for this study observe uh, what you are going to do you go on to create a plan and then uh, you pick one development area and you create uh, you you need to tell me the age group so first of all i need one uh, one age group also, I need one development area and I need uh, uh, like to talk about a particular child. So let us go here. So the observation after you complete them, 
Yeah, so you complete the observation, then you undertake summative assessment. So you can discuss more about what you have observed about the child. And then you need to plan ahead. What's, what I'm going to do in the next observation? How to make it easier for the child to develop? Or maybe uh, what do I need and how to do it? So all this is your planning and then you need to implement implement plan uh, with the child and use uh, this in the next observation. So let us go back here. So as you can see, uh, there are you need to use as well two minimum uh, different type of observations. So I have too many different type of observations like I have event sample, time sample, uh, uh, sociogram, I have narrative, free uh, description, I have target child, I have checklist, and I have a child tracker or movement record. All these different type of observations. So what I do, I do, uh, I finish my, I, I start my observation, look, listen, note, describe and then put it in my paper. I do the assessment. I start checking the child, do things uh, to make sure that he understand or does with me. And then I plan ahead. So first uh, we start, and then we assess, and then we plan. Also, we have to uh, say our comments, why this is good observation, why this is, wasn't very good because of some disadvantages. So let us go a little further and go back to Unit 314, if you remember. We studied Unit 314, and in this unit, you can find lots and lots of observations and assessment planning. So if I go a little bit further here, is it? Okay, so uh, I need to check every single one of the observation uh, methods. So I have, if you, if I just enlarge this, I can show you. These are all observation methods. So I have. I have time sample, I have uh, sociogram, I have narrative if we descriptive description. Also, I have target child checklist, child tracker movement record, and event sample. So let us go one by one. What's event sample? So the event sample is the way that you record how many times the child shown certain behavior. Let us say the child. Uh, you assume that this child, uh, first of all, I need to identify what's the aim of my observation, why I'm doing it, and also what I would think the, the outcome from this. Uh, so, for uh, if I use event sample, I need to get specific action is being happened or behavior is being happening over a period of time. It can be used very flexibly and help you understand more about individual child. Respond as well uh, as to whether any patterns being repeated over the period of time. So let us go and check what's the, uh, the event sample. So if I was going to create an event sample, I will just create this table. So if I create this table, this is mainly my observation. I need to write. So I put time, place, and I put uh, those involved, circumstances, other notes. So first, first of all, I'm going to observe, for, let us say, I'm going to observe a child with uh, a very little uh, low social development. This child, I need to write why I'm discussing this child. This child has got uh, a transition because uh, the 
had to say one of his parents passed away and uh, I am going to uh, he's very shy. He doesn't talk to anyone, doesn't want to interact and uh, a bit sad, very emotional all, all the time. As soon as you talk to him, he's a he's a client. So this is my case. Now I need to observe how many times did this child uh, cry over uh, a week or how many times this child was uh, any pleasant or unsocial, antisocial with other kids during a period of time, for example. So I would put uh, 10.45 to 10.15, for example. The place in the uh, garden, those involved, child A, child M, child N, and then uh, what the circumstances this child, child uh, D, my 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 what I'm studying at the moment is child D. So I'm going to say child D is being unsocial with these children. He didn't want to talk to them. And then same thing happened. Child D didn't talk to them at eleven o'clock. He didn't want to to. They offered him some uh, food. That and uh, he rejected it. He didn't want any interaction. Uh, between 12 to 11, the child D didn't want to go to the garden with others. They didn't want to talk to them. They didn't want to smile. Between uh, four to five, child D didn't want to. So this is, I am building a case, yes? So event sample, this is how you do it, okay? Now, if I go to the, uh, other type of so if I was going to create an event sample let us go back to the sheet where I put my answer so here is where I put my answer this is created by cash for you so I'm going to send you these ones here you put your name leave the pin leave the uh, uh, any information about uh, the school we fill it. Now it says the area of development. I pick only one area, which is, let us say, the, um, for this particular uh, example that I've given you, I'm going to pick all social. So all four observations going to be on the same development area, which is the social area. Yeah, social and emotional and personal development. I'm not going to course between areas. I know if I develop, uh, if the child has developed, for example, the physical uh, area, still with the physical area, he's going to move more. He will, he will be happy more than he will, uh, that the emotional development also, he will pick more friends because he can't run with them. So you see, they are all linked in together, but I'm not going to, to, uh, focus on all these observations. I'm going to pick one area only. So here I'm going to put the uh, social development. So uh, child identifier, I'm going to put uh, the child D. Age of the child, as we said, all of these observations are one area, particular area. The age group, three to five. Method, I'm going to pick the uh, the one we picked here. Let us go back. So what we picked at this very moment, we picked an event sample grid. So this is the, the my first observation. I finished, I, I, I finished the observation. Now, if I go back to the sheet where I put the answer, it says, it says what's the aim? Uh, of this observation. The aim is uh, observing child A uh, physical um, social development because he's not been interacting with other children. He had some transition. That's why the aim is to make this child more sociable. Uh, now the observation. So I put the table here. I, I, I just, you go to here, let us, I go to insert 
Then as you can see table, I insert the table in the observation area and start writing whatever I want, yeah? So I just need to create, sorry, this, this table. So I'm going to create this table for time, place, those involved, circumstances and other notes, whatever I want to put. Then if I go to my observation sheet, It says summative assessment. What are the needs of, of this child? Uh, and also relate to the uh, area of the, the development. Uh, you've observed so that a child development stage, interest, needs. You need to do holistic assessment on this child. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, I observe this child. Uh, he he over this period of time, which is between uh, nine to to four o'clock. By the time his parents, his one of his parents collected him, he's been sad and uh, he didn't interact with any children. Uh, what he needs, I would assume, he needs um bit. That like that, maybe the teacher to be more interactive and try to. Uh, I'll just talk about yourself. I need to next time. He needs. Uh, more help, more support to get interacted with children, uh, something to make him happy because he's been sad all the time. So now I. Uh, now I made my uh, summative assessment. Next step for the child. So what's next step for this child? Next step for this child, I'm going to try to do more narrative assessment just to check. So I have used, first of all, I have used one of the, uh, <laughs> I have used one of the observation method, which is an event sample grid. As you can see here, this is the one. So this is one observation method. If I use the narrative, what's the narrative? It's very simple, very basic. I can just talk. I don't need no grid. I don't need nothing, but I need two observation methods. So this is what I'm going to do. Where is it? OK, sorry. So what's the next step for this child? I'm going to uh, the, the next step is I'm going to do some narrative assessment next time so I can discuss more about the child behavior and what, how we can help him. Then you need here your signature, the teacher's signature, uh, that your name and signature and the teacher signature and name and here I can give you your feedback so this is the area where I have for feedback to you and also I have a, you carry on go down there is an activity plan so as we said we said we need, first of all, do the observation, do our assessment, and then we do the planning for next stage. So here where I, I put here activity plan number, let us say this is, uh, this is one, yeah? Name, you put your, your name, uh, date and time, when did you do this planning? The child is child D, as we said, the age, with age group, you put the age group, you don't put the real age, and then resources. Did you use uh, a pen? Did you use a, a map? Did you use uh, toys? Did you use, have you used anything? You put it under resources, and then you come, come here. It says, uh, so now here we go on to do a plan for this child. So this club, how will you provide uh, an enabling environment, consider uh, health and safety issues. So first of all, I would say I'm going to do 
uh, risk assessment to make sure the area is empty, all clear. Then I will bring some toys or Lego, ask the children to bring the boxes, start putting them on the floor, call this child D and try to get him involved with other children because the children, when it is a playtime, they enjoy it more. They would, he would not think about his transition much. What's the aim? Uh, uh, you have one aim for this, which is uh, developing the child D uh, social area. Now, uh, what's the theory's uh, perspective? Uh, influence this plan, you need to go back and check. You have so many theories for each area of development. Put one of these uh, theories and just say, this theory has influenced me to, uh, to do my observation. And now, uh, now it says uh, your role and other as teaching and learning strategies, scaffolding and supporting this child. So what's your strategy? My strategy is I'm going to show this child uh, how to interact with other children. I'm going to be a role model for this child and try to get him involved with other children. What's the uh, now differentiation? Obviously, we are not uh, like it child is unique. So what's the differentiation with this child? You need to say this child is a bit more sad than others. So I'm going to uh, maybe put a radio on or a music to make him a little bit happier. Uh, I might speak to him a little bit more because he like someone to talk to him. Uh, so what differentiates him from others? You put it on the sheet and then the description uh, of uh, play activities, opportunities. Now you need to describe what the plan is. Again, you put it here and then you reflect on it. Reflect what uh, your, uh, you learned uh, about planning, uh, uh, differentiation, enabling environment. So you need to you reflect on yourself. Just say, hey, uh, as a practitioner, I deal with lots of kids and I think this is the best way because I dealt with so many children and you just talk about yourself. You reflect on your, your own practice. Now we need to, uh, again, name the child, uh, the, the learner, name the, uh, name the teacher. You put the name of the learner at the top here. So here you you sign the teacher sign and it's done. And I give you here my so for each observation you finish, you need to tell us what, what was good about your observation, what was what went right, and these things you can find it from here, where you have. Oh, sorry. Let me open the observations. As we said, it's all in unit 314. So if I go back and read other type of observations. So now I am going, and as you can see here, each type of observation, you would have advantages and disadvantages. I have time sampled. That's another way of doing things, yeah? To observe children, I can create a time sample. It's again, I need to create another... Uh, let me show you how it's done. It's here. This is the time sample. I need to create another graph, another uh, uh, table, and put the time in between uh, at 10 zero five, this is what the child done. 15 past 10, this is what he did. But again, it's all about 
same area of development because all my longitudinal study going to be on the same age group on the same area of development. So I'm going to still, this is after I can put on the top social development uh, and then I put uh, after one week from the first observation, then I can fill these gaps. Put here observation. Uh, at the, this time, the child didn't want to talk to anyone. He start uh, doing a uh, Lego by himself. This time, um, child M tried to talk to him and he didn't want to talk to. At uh, this time, you thought you better to interact with this child than spoken to him. And slowly, slowly, you just fill these, uh, but just put any different times. It doesn't need to be this time particularly. I would put between 12 to 4 and tell his parents come. What did he do? Same thing, yeah? So this is another type of observation, which is the time sample. Now I need to, to do another one. So for us, we need to pick minimum two. So if I use all these observations, would be even better, but I can not use minimum two. So uh, sociogram, what is this? Sociogram is a graph where, as you can see here, I put the name of the child, named uh, first friend, named second friend, and here should be third friend, not two again. Uh, and I put all the children in the in the nursery. Let us say they are ten, or twenty, or uh, I. It depends on the age group I'm using. Yeah. So for here, the age group you have only uh, six. Normally, you have you will have four or five, whatever the necessary size is, these are your sample, the ch children who you are their key person. So now you ask every child or check with them or monitor them who's you ask with them, you ask them who's your first friend, who's your second friend, or maybe you observe them and check. Uh, so from observation, you see that he, Michaela, most interested in talking to uh, James and, for example, Sarah. Then this is the first one, this is the second one, and Brian, Sarah again, and Michaela. Uh, so we, I put each one of the children, then I build my observation uh, description. So here, if I have to fill another one, I need to fill another one, obviously. So if I go to the top, again, same thing. I'm going to put name, development area, which is the social, uh, mainly I'm, I'm observing now more than a child, which is child uh, uh, M, Michaela, and for uh, Nuna, S for Sammy, J for James, and me. So I'm going to put their letters. These are the children, or you can use one child only for all your development uh, observations, and that's another way of doing it as well. So let us say I put all these four. Now I'm going to talk about their age group is three to five. Method of observation is a sociogram. So, and then the aim is to check the children uh, social development and how are they developing because they all are new to the nursery. So now I'm going to put, uh, they are all same children. You're not going to pick different, different, different group. We, you're going to use the same group, and build your observation on. So one child, particularly, like now I have all these children. I'm going to say Michaela is the most. Um, well, I'm still talking about uh, one of these. Let us say Michaela. I'm going to say Michaela is the most uh, social person because she appeared in so many or Brian maybe. 
Brian is the most social uh, child in the nursery. Everyone talks to him. He's a friend of everyone. And while him, he's got only a friend, which is uh, Sarah and Michaela, not more than in this case. I, I need to build my case. While the most shy person was Sarah, for example, and then here, I need to say, how can I work with this child? How can I develop their social skills? How can I? So, and what's the disadvantage? I say my observation, my advantage, the advantages was this, the disadvantages was just pick ideas. Don't copy and paste. It's very, very bad to copy and paste. So you read it, understand what's the good thing about it, what's the bad thing about it, and then you just pick some information, put it in your observation. Say, I, I picked this type of observation because then you can say the advantage, so some of the advantages, and then you can say, however, there are some areas which I need to look at because uh, it is part of the disadvantages for this type of uh, observations, and then you can talk about that. So now we covered another area of observation. There is uh, also free description. So free description, that's easy. Uh, I put the name of the child, I put the age group, and also the date of the observation, which is important. Uh, which area of development is very important. Uh, and uh, I put what uh, activity that was. So for the uh, free description, I put, let us say, sand uh, tray or uh, playing in the garden or so and then with other two kids then what happened to this james i can't just talk about him he picked up the bucket he played with the bucket he dropped the sand uh, because it's social i need to get other kids then uh, he wanted some help from uh, the social uh, the, the person uh, the child and the child S didn't help him because you just need to, to write story, yeah? And then at the end, you put the time. So when did you start, which is 10, 40, uh, 2.45, when did you finish? 2.53, that's it, finished. This is my observation. Narrative is where I'm going to, um, uh, um, so for the advantages, this is a free description, uh, no preparation. I can just observe the child. That's why I picked this method because I don't know how this child will act for certain situation. Disadvantages I still uh, need to write fast because these events happen very fast and I might not pick some of the things has happened during this observation. We have target child this is another type of observation what does it mean target child you pick one child only for your for observations from a to z my observations are all on one person which is child um, s child s i am uh, observing child s let us say language development the whole for observation about child S, that's a target uh, child you can put. I am using a target child method because you need two methods. I'm using target child method and I'm using another method, which is, uh, let us say, narrative, because I'm just going to describe what happened and put it on the sheet. So this is easy. This is easiest one, actually. So you put, I am... Uh, Narrative and you put child target. So my child target is A. I'm going to observe him over four weeks or six weeks period. Uh, child A, uh, I, I'm going to use the other method of the observation, which is the negative assessment. Uh, so I'm going just to freely describe what, what this child has been doing. And then 
just advantages. Why did you pick this uh, method? What's the disadvantages? As well, you put it on the sheet. Now, there is another observation, which is, uh, as you can see here, for the child target, that's easy to do. How to do this? We have uh, minutes, we have location, activities, interact. So as you can see, for the child uh, target, I would see teach, uh, teach, PC, and I put A for adult, C for other children, and uh, arrows. So I put, uh, for example, uh, TC into A equals target child is saying something to the adult. So if I if if this child is talking to me, I'm going to put uh, TC, uh, which is the target child to A, uh, and uh, this is the type of activity. So it depends on what type of activity. You, so you need to use the arrows. And as you can see here, two arrows to TC, which mean interact. Uh, that child is talking to himself. So if this child is interacting without putting anything, like without C, without A, that's when he's interacting with himself, just Talk it in. So, uh, so this is where I put the interaction, the activity, what he's been doing. Like, is he been playing something, doing something? Where is the location? How many minutes? Uh, so the first minute, uh, second, third, and so on. This is the uh, another way of observation. We have checklist. Checklist. How it looks like checklist. Checklist, I will create questions uh, and then just uh, acquired, emerging, not yet. So acquired, this means is happening, just tick it. Emerging and um, like you tick wherever you think uh, this is what happening. Uh, so is it acquired? Has it happened already? Is it now going to happen very close to the time? Oh, not yet. This is hasn't even thought about it. So this is my checklist. You take care of uh, this observation is being met. There is another way of doing it, which is uh, sorry. Let me come here, which is tracking. Uh, tracking sheet. So if I show you, this is another child tracking or movement uh, record. So this is the tracker. I go to, to my uh, sheet and just paste these uh, stickers, different sizes, right on each size uh, or each one of them, and then take a picture, put it on the sheet on my sheet and make it a little bit bigger just to show me what you've done it and how you've done it again. And as you can see, all these arrows tells me how many minutes you used for each one of these activities. So I have 10 minutes for this, 20 minutes for this. Uh, just how many minutes the child is spent. And then here where you can put more information. So I have the child name. I have the date of, of the observation. Uh, I just put the date, start time, end time, and then I can start talking about the child. Where did he go? What did he do? Mostly, where did he did he play in the with the book? Did he read the books? Uh, did he just type them up and went to another area? Where he's moving from? Where uh, which space to another space? And how long he's taken? Time is very important. And then you can write something like this. It says uh, the child that played uh, around and uh, like wh where did he go? What did he do? You need to write a little bit more than this. <laughs> OK, and what's the advantage? You pick this area of the of um, type of observation because you like to track the child to know a bit more about uh, them. Uh, and 
to find out about the child's interest, what, what's stimulating him or her. Also, the disadvantage you say, even though it was a brilliant way of observing, you still have some advantages, which is it may not record the reason why the child is doing certain things, for example. So you need to analyze your way of observation. OK, so as we as you can see here. I have now discussed with you many type of observations. All I need you to do, let us go back to the task. So as you can see, summarizing for me is, this is observ four observations happened within six weeks of time. So for the first, first observation, you put the time date after when you do the second observation, you put a time and date after one week or three weeks, you put another two observations. So I need these observations happened within four weeks. Also, I need one area of development. One uh, age group and. Uh, also, you need two observation methods. As you can see, the most important thing to notice, if I show you here, if, if I go to the uh, here, it says, let me go to the end. most important thing is this task is either pass or fail. You could easily fail the whole course because of this particular unit. So please, please, please. You need to read it carefully. You need to do it properly and send it to your teacher. If you failure to do that, you might fail the whole course, OK? As you can see here, this is I sent you as well uh, uh, here where you have how how to mark you against like you need to make proper. Uh, observations. Who are poor recording what's good about it, what not good about it, as you can see minimum of four cycles of observations assessment planning for the uh, longitudinal study over six weeks period, yes? Also, it's very, very important to see that this task, let me check where it says it's either pass or fail. There is no other options. It's not like the other coursework. You, you do the coursework, you done. No, this need more attention because it's either pass or fail. Okay, that's good. We found it. So, as you can see, this is a mandatory assessment task and will be graded either graded as pass or refer. So, it's very, very important. And you need to go to the checklist for the marking scheme to check how you will be assessed. I'm going to mark it. There is uh, IQA going to check it and then the awarding body, which is cash, going to check it. So it's very important to check it, to read it carefully, to do it properly because it's either pass or fail. Please. Yes. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed your class.
and uh, I hope to see you very soon. Have a lovely day.